So yes, I did cross the streams. I actually did uh, because I still had the um, the mobile version of Streamlabs open on my phone, and apparently it gets cranky about that and kept telling me that the server was down and I tried logging out and logging back in. So pro tip for everybody <laughs> that's just as much a mess as I am, close your app in your phone first. But see, now I've got my, my camera working and it's, oh goodness. So yeah, <laughs> that's been, that's been my morning. Yeah, you can tell um, I've got a nice little uh, hive break out here on my thumb. So, you know, stress, I'm sure it's fine. Everything's fine. This is supposed to be our chill time and not, not our stress time. So now that we've got all that sorted and got ourselves some sort of management, what I was saying before about the um, correction to last week is that the way that this works with the um, the hook side being the entire length of half of it is that it doesn't leave any room if you need to shorten it or or lengthen it. So what I did was I made the hook side two inches long and the loop side 10 inches long. And this way it can go here or it can go, it can go all the way up to two inches. We're gonna attach this to the back of our shield. So that was what I was planning on saying at the beginning of this and you got some fun tech support instead. And now we know that you can't have the phone app open and also the, um, the desktop application. So I went ahead and just made new ones. Um, the, so the entire, uh, thing was, let's see, we got, uh, 10 inches. So 10 fours is 40. So it's a little more than a yard of hook and loop, uh, tape for me to discover this. So there was enough you could. Now, if you had a very limited amount of what you had, um, that you could take the stitches out, cut this, uh, the hook part in half, uh, up to that two inches and then reattach it. It was faster for me and I had the resources to just make new pieces. And also then I can show you the difference. So this is the short one and then this is the long one. But if you have a seam ripper, it's very easy to take the time to, uh, what I would recommend is to go on the back here. You can see the seams. Now I used black thread so it'd blend in. And use your seam ripper to take the entire uh, hook piece off, cut it down to two inches, and then reattach it. So either way is viable technique. So I am going to set these off to the side though. Um, just in case we need something additional for this project or what have you. All right. Uh, the other thing that I did off screen was that I used my serger to serge the ends of our webbing. Now you can use a regular sewing machine. Um, I'd recommend doing like a zigzag stitch and then go through with a straight stitch. <laughs> well, that was very nice of her to agree to do the sewing. Um, I would recommend, um, especially with the, the hook and loop tape to go slowly on your machine. So sewing machines are like cars. If you push the pedal all the way down, it goes super fast, which is fine if you're comfortable with it and you know what you're doing. Um, but some materials get a little crabby if you go too fast, um, just like those windy roads. So I recommend not speeding through when you're stitching this. Uh, just because of the thickness of the material and um, because of the nature of the hooks, because they kind of go all over the place, that it can get caught up and it causes your machine to uh, to have a small revolt if you go too fast. So that would be my recommendation. That was one of my 
One of my hurdles right before uh, I came on here was because I was not able to get to this ahead of time. I thought, oh, I've got five minutes. I can do this. And three of those minutes ended up me rethreading and taking apart my machine to clear it out from all the uh, thread that I got in cotton up there. So, learn from my mistakes, which is why I'm doing this in the first place. Uh, don't go too fast. Just like driving your car. Uh, but yes, so for these, what I did was I just surged the ends um, with my serger. If you don't have a serger, you can use your regular sewing machine. Again, I'd recommend a zigzag stitch and then maybe a straight stitch on top of the zigzag stitch for extra reinforcement. Um, you can also, once you've stitched them together, you can melt them together again with the lighter um, along this. We are going to put a piece of um, foam on top of this once it's, you know, now that we've finished it. But this will make our lives easier when we go to put the foam on top that we don't have to try and line things up and, and finagle. And so this way it's just a single piece instead of trying to line up two pieces of material. So we've got all that. So let's grab the shield. So this is with a coat of gesso on it. And I was trying to get two coats on here, but you know, things happen. And it's fine, everything's fine. So as you can see, we've got a couple little, actually I don't know if y'all can see it. I can see it. We've got a couple little spots of gesso, these little divots. And that's just from the air pockets of the foam, not getting a good adherence to, uh, to the gesso. So, um, if you were using something else like a plastic dip as a, um, as a base, that you would want to do multiple coats as well. So, what I think we're going to do is put our scissors away for now. And, and you can see here too, this is our little dent. And I made sure to get some paint in there because we can go back later and distress it. So I'm going to grab a brush and we'll go ahead and put a second coat of the gesso on here. And then we'll move on to uh, prepping for the next stage. So for this, I'm going to use um, a chip brush. Uh, I get them at the home improvement store. Uh, you can order a box of them online. Um, you could use really any kind of paintbrush that you might have around the house. A smaller brush is going to take longer. So that's the only, the only downside to that. Uh, today I am using gesso, it's finding the one that I opened. always the last place you look there it is all right so this is the gesso that I am currently using it is a Liquitex acrylic medium um, which is what you would use if you were priming a canvas to do a traditional painting so a lot of people will use uh, plastic dip and that is a great base for painting um, my personal problem is because of the fumes that um, I'm not always uh, capable of using sprays for paint. So this is sort of my alternative when I can't use a spray. So since I just washed my hair, I'm gonna put it up so that I maybe don't get paint in it, but still no promises. All right, so um, the way that I like to paint large surfaces, again, with my background in theater and technical theater, is um, with a really uh, forearm style brushing, and I'll show you what I mean by that, because that's a weird way to say it. So I'm gonna move 
this. Here we go. Okay. So. Ah, all right. So I'm shaking up my, my base real good here. And I'm going to start by just putting some right on top of the project. And I'm going to take my, my brush here, and this is a two inch wide brush, and I'm going to hold it on the metal part. So I'm holding it right here and holding it uh, just between my fingers. I don't know what this is like, uh, you know, what it might represent or what something you might hold something else like this. Anyway, so hold it down at the, at the base on the metal part and then just do sort of windshield wiper motions back and forth. Now the difference between doing it this way and holding it up on the handle is first of all, for somebody like me who is eternally messy, that holding it down on the metal portion gives you more control and less uh, spatter when you're making big strokes. You also, again, for a piece that's large like this, by doing it this way, you sort of get the whole arm involved and not just your wrist and not just your fingers. And so it helps for some more even distribution of the paint and a faster application, in all honesty. We got a little crafting ASMR there, I guess. So the other thing that I'm doing is that my first coat, I went this direction. The long the length of the piece and now I'm gonna go the width of the piece and sort of crisscross the uh, the paints what I'm trying to do is to get as smooth for a smooth a surface as I can because this is supposed to be a metallic thing Yep. Crisscross gesso sauce. And gesso is just an acrylic, this particular gesso is just an acrylic paint. Um, there are other kinds. I think there's one that's for the oil base and one for water base. I don't use those, so I can't speak definitively on them. But for this project, acrylic paint is perfect. We don't want to put it on super thick, but we do want to put it on enough so that we can't and see I'm already I'm dripping on my carpet. That's all right. Let's uh, move other things. I don't want to be this color too late. I should probably just always work with a drop cloth, just even when I'm sewing, just in case. You never know. step on it and then I'm gonna have white gesso all over my house all right see I got it on my shirt just got it everywhere try and prevent further further accidents, which won't help a whole lot, but you know.
The other benefit to putting on a thin layer of the gesso is that it doesn't take long to dry. <laughs> well, luckily I am the landlord, so it's just me making my, putting paint on my carpet. So at least there's that. <laughs> well, the laptop was is specifically for living in this craft room. So, at some point, I'll probably I've got a um, like an air purifier, like a filter, and I've got a dehumidifier. I'm probably at some point get a um, like a hood installed. But I fully expect this laptop to become covered with paint or. Um, you know, whatever else I'd be working with at the time. But look, it's already got a Geek Forge sticker on it, so it knows. It knows that this is what's going to happen. Um, so the, I mean, that's, that's an awesome question. Um, it's going to depend really on the humidity of your area. So if it is, um, if it's a rainy day, then the humidity is going to be higher and that's going to make your paint dry more slowly and, um, with some potential, uh, bubbles or, or something along those lines. If it's a dry day, then your paint is going to dry more quickly. So by using basically the thinnest amount of paint that you can get away with is usually the best way to go um just because it's going to be the least amount of drying time regardless i have a problem um i live in georgia and so during the summer especially um where it's very humid that the um leaving projects outside to dry or in a garage take a lot longer because it's so moist in the air All right. So while it's drying, we're going to prep the next sort of face. So the original request was for this to be sort of a shutter on thing. And so Lone Star is one of the security companies that are basically like rent the cops. So we're gonna make this shield a bright blue window, the viewfinder, is going to be our logo. <laughs> so this is actually it's funny because this is actually printed for um, because this is a piece of paper, so we don't actually have to print these backwards. I so I make shirts sometimes with like iron-on vinyl, and those you do have to print backwards or, or cut backwards because then you're putting the back of it onto the front of the shirt and then you turn it inside out. So I tried to make this easy, 
and this is actually printed uh, forward. It looks backwards in the phone camera, but it's forward in the hut. In this one. No, nope, they both look backwards. Okay. I should probably do some sort of camera thing. But um, this is going to be our, our template for uh, cutting out your stencil. So putting this on, like if you can print it on a piece of cardboard um, or cardstock, that would be awesome. I just did a regular sheet of paper because that's fine too. So you're going to be cutting out a negative space for the most part. So negative space is um, anything that we, so what we're going to do, sorry, I'm still a little all over the place this morning. So the plan is that we're going to cut out these pieces and then we're going to use a sponge to stipple on the logo. So it will look like it's faded. It'll look like it's been sort of, uh, you know, brushed off due to wear and that sort of thing. So it won't look brand new. So our first step is to make our stencil. So the pieces that we're going to cut, I'm just going to shade in so that y'all can see. And this is actually a good practice if you're working with things like stencil to make sure that you know which piece you're cutting out when you start cutting so you don't have to print it again. So basically, the logo is going to be pretty easy because all pieces are connected, right? And these are logos from Sixth World Design. I think they are official shadow and logos at this point, but you can also find more of their cool designs on sixthworlddesign.tumblr.com, I think is the address. I'll double check. Um, so, logo is easy. We're going to cut out anything that has these uh, these markings on them. Now, where it gets a little more complicated is the letters, right? Because, like, okay, S is easy. T is easy because they're just single single letters. Single, single shapes, we'll call them shapes. But we have a problem because if I cut out this O, then my middle piece is also gone, right? And I want the middle piece to be there. So what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna do just a couple of small lines here and we're gonna cut out everything around it so we're going to cut here and here and leave that middle piece because we want that middle piece to be um, basically our positive so we're going to do the same thing with the a and with the r Now the other way that you could do this is to cut out your little pieces and keep track of them and then lay them down with a little piece of tape when you're doing your, your stippling. Um, so we'll basically, uh, we'll see how that works out for us. Now I did include the security services at the bottom, but again, we're going to have a similar problem with the R's. So. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll leave that on hold for now. So now I'm going to take my uh, my pen knife here. And uh, you can also use scissors. In fact, I'll show you both ways. So these are my paper cutting scissors. Very important to not use your fabric scissors to cut paper. So if we want to cut out this top piece with our scissors. Um, what I like to do is sort of fold the page in half, ish, and we're going to cut a slit right, right in the middle there. So this is a piece that we're going to be getting away, uh, throwing away anyway. So what we're going to end up doing is um, 
because we want to keep our exterior intact, which is why we're not coming in from a side. So I made a little slit. So now I can put my scissors in here and cut basically from the inside out. Some of these little bits might be more difficult to do with scissors, but we're going to cut this top piece out with scissors. So, and we got a good start. And there we go. Yeah, stencils are definitely their own market. That's that is for sure. If I was going to do it in that sort of capacity, um, I definitely use my um, my silhouette cutter instead of cutting them all by hand. But that's just because it would make it go faster. But since this is a one-off, we can do it by hand. So the next thing is we're going to cut. Well, let's do this one first because I'm seeing the same problem that we're going to have with our letters with these right here. <laughs> yeah, the silhouette cutter is definitely easier, especially if you're doing large pieces. But for a project like this, where we're only doing one, doing it by hand. So, I want to cut this shape off, but it's going to need these. Um, so, I think we're going to have to go with the, uh, the tape method here. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Trying to work here, but it's okay. Also, cosplay doesn't have to be expensive, so you don't have to have expensive tools like a silhouette cutter uh, to be able to make pieces. It might make it easier if you're doing a lot of them, but it doesn't. Re it's not really a requirement. 
you can make entire costumes by going to your local thrift store and buying pieces to put them together. Which, especially for something like a Shadowrun costume, is a great way to to really make it nice and unique is going to those secondhand stores. Um, I found, so my favorite, uh, secondhand cosplay find by far was I went to, uh, one of my local secondhand stores and there was, um, a wedding dress and they were, and the wedding dress clearly came with a crinoline underneath it, but they were selling the wedding dress and the crinoline separate. And, uh, crinoline is, um, in this context, so crinoline is actually a type of fabric, uh, but in this particular context, it's the floofy bit that goes under under a dress to give you poof. Uh, so you would see it on uh, like uh, old fashioned ball gowns, um, like Cinderella's ball gown would have had this crinoline underneath it to give it that additional sort of bell kind of shape. So this crinoline piece happened to be exactly in my size and this is something that is typically uh, an, an expensive piece or for me to make it myself would take a while um, so that was probably my favorite cosplay find I, I have tried shoes um, I don't recommend shoes so much from secondhand stores uh, just because the usually they've seen some good love by the time they get there and I'm very hard on footwear personally so all right I think that I've got all of these outside pieces done See if I can tell you, show y'all what I'm talking about with this negative space talk. So I don't have to worry quite so much about these pieces that I'm putting out of these little these little bits here, but I do want to try and keep as much of the paper integrity intact. Okay. So we've cut out the logo, but the problem is that we also need this star bit to be in there too. So this is what I'm talking about when I say negative space because it's literally gone. And so when we put the paint on it, the paint will go into the holes that we've cut. So what I'm gonna do, we'll set that off to the side for a moment. So I'm gonna take my star piece here. I 
and I'm going to cut my little little pieces out. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to recreate that star with these little wedges. Right? So we've got three more of these wedges to cut out. So I think, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. We may have to go for the, uh, for a reverse image thing here. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll put these off over here. This is just the back of the notebook. I'm just going to sort of place them for now. And this will help us to keep it all sort of together. Now, if I had been planning ahead, that we would have cut little pathways between each of these. But I didn't, so. It's a learning for everybody. In worst case scenario, if it looks like it's not gonna work out, you can always print out another one and cut it out again. That's my... <laughs> Well, and I may go back and revisit and put in these uh, these lines so that it's easier. Probably would be a, a nice thing to do. All right. So if we put our piece that we cut out back on here, make sure everything lines up. So 
I'm just using the tip of my blade to move around these small pieces of paper. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do a new uh, file for y'all, and we'll put those little marks in there. But this is the general idea. So all of these three pieces of paper um, will have to be taped down um, on the underside or something so that they don't move around when we're painting, right? And so it's going to be the same challenge with uh, the letters that are multiple shapes. So let's try Let's see if our... Um, because this is, if, if y'all have ever seen, um, like, army stencils with that, that, uh, that army kind of print where they're spray painting, that the reason that they have those lines in the middle of them is because of this exact problem. That they use stencils to spray paint all of that equipment, and when you have letters that are multiple shapes, it causes a problem. Also realize I'm just cutting on the back of my notebook, which is fine if you don't have a self-healing mat, by the way. But you can use the back of a um, of a notebook that's got that thick uh, brown kind of cardboard to it. That that does make a good cutting surface. You can't use it forever because eventually you'll cut to the paper. But for something like this, it is a great alternative to a self-healing mat. Yeah, definitely should have done this with the star. So I will update the file for y'all so that we'll have these little marks here. But so when this paints, I'm going to show you. that we have this O kind of shape, even though it's got these little lines in the middle of them. So I will read you the star for y'all so they'll have uh, little lines that stick out so that everything can be a single piece and it won't be some sort of overly complicated thing uh, because I am not nothing of someone who over-engineers projects. So Let's check on the shield and see how we're doing with paint drying. So I'll just set that over here for now. So it's a little tacky in some places. Yeah, it's still, it's still wet. That is okay. But I was kind of hoping that I could get it painted for y'all uh, that second layer before we started. But what are you going to do? So I'm actually not going to keep cutting this out because I'm going to redo it and reprint it. Um, and the reprint will have little spots that will connect our little pizza pie slices there. So it'll be all thing. Um, you could, the challenge with the heat gun to make paint dry is, um, that the heat is going to cause reactions with the chemicals in the paint. 
it's also going to soften your foam. So a better method would be if you've got fans. We actually have a paint drying um, stand in the garage. And so if you set up two fans, in fact, uh, would you like to go on a little field trip? Let's do that. It's already a weird stream. Let's do, let's do a field trip. Okay. So we have set up in our garage a heat um, So there you go. There's a little field trip. And there it is. Back in the oh no. <laughs> There's a feature on the Apple phone, uh on the iPhone, where you can um like tap it lightly and it will turn your screen off and I need to turn that off because I'm just just all over the place with stuff like that so yeah so that was a little field trip to our drying station so if you have like and you can set that up in your garage we have it set up on a couple of saw horses because we were using it for smaller pieces so if I was going to do that for this project um you could use some chairs or some boxes and as long as you have the airflow on both sides of your piece, sort of this cross breeze that's going through, it's basically a paint drying box. Um, and so we use those like stand fans that rotate, but we don't turn the rotations on. You can use a couple of box fans. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to set up a real paint station in your home or in your garage, garage is recommended because of ventilation issues, um, that the other thing that you would do is to set up uh, some drop cloths for overspray. And um, so that would, if you were spraying, if you're using an airbrush, stuff like that, that you can set yourself up a little uh, self-contained thing that's covered with drop cloths and drop cloths on the floor so you don't do things like get paint on your carpet. So, okay. So anyway, that's the that's sort of the paint area. Um and yeah. So all right. So my to do for next week is that I'm going to 
going to redo this file to be a new version to the website that has the little posts, I don't know what they're called, um, so that it's all one piece and we don't have to deal with these little bits. And um, we'll do the same thing down here to so redo that. I did want to let you all know that we are going to have a, a special uh, thing for Pride Month this year. Um, so be on the lookout. That's going to be announced tomorrow as well. And um, I'm very excited about about what we've created. And um, we are going to be donating 15% um, of the profits from those specific products to uh, Lost and Found, which is an organization here in the Atlanta area that helps at-risk and homeless LGBTQ plus teens in the area, um, provides them with shelter resources um, and uh, all sorts of stuff and they are a great organization if you want to look into it for your own donation purposes so we will be doing that um, tomorrow and um, yeah so we are the Geek Forge everywhere except Instagram we're just Geek Forge one word and you can find us on Etsy at thegeekforge.etsy.com you can find us on our website at thegeekforge.org we're on Facebook we're on Twitter uh, or even on TikTok. Uh, I'm still trying to learn it, but it's a lot of fun to see what other people are doing. So, uh, yeah, come hang out with us during the week. And so next week, we will be doing our paint layer of color. Um, so it'll be the black and the gray, like in the picture. And that will probably get... We'll see. I might paint it black first off stream. And then we'll put the silver on top of it afterwards. Uh, I'm still deciding what's going to be best for, you know, interest sake. Because watching paint dry is not very interesting. Um, and uh, then we'll install our uh, arm straps. And we'll install the viewfinder window. And then we'll put the trim on and then we'll be done. Uh, we'll do, we'll paint our logo and any sort of distressing once the paint is dry. So probably, I was hoping for one more week, but it's probably going to be two more weeks just with paint drying times and that sort of thing. So yeah, come by and hang out, check us out, and I will see you all next week. Um, oh, and the last thing, because again, I'm all over the place this morning. Uh, next Tuesday is going to be the start of Shatter on Mission Season 6 over on twitch.tv slash master of rem with our friends over at rem alternus so y'all come uh check that out and uh, come play games with us and i will see you all next week bye <laughs>